Hello, welcome. My name is Cal. This series is a series I've been wanting to put together for a long time. Um, this is a developer series for big commerce. And I want to, within this series of videos, I want to define what I consider to be best practices. And if you guys have uh, you know, any qualms with what I have to say, or if you guys are sitting here thinking that, you know, there's been some pet peeve of yours that you wish other developers would know, you know, send me a comment on any of the videos in this series and, you know, let's build this together to be something where, you know, we, we push the big commerce development community to improve, if that makes sense. Because one day, you know, the project that you're working on right now might be my client or vice versa. And it would be nicer if we all had cleaner code that we're, was that we're taking over. Um, but in, you know, in addition to that, I have ulterior motives. Um, one day you might be somebody on my team. And so, you know, I want to coach you guys to be the best developers you can be within the context of big commerce, um, because I think we can all win more together. So I'm, I'm coming at this from a, from a mindset of abundance. I want to help you be better. For many reasons some are good for me some are just good for you all of them are good for the clients if that makes sense and if you're watching this series and you're not a developer but maybe you're developer e or maybe you i don't know how you got a hold of this video but if you're if you're not a developer like you know these videos might still be something that you want to show your developer and say like follow these rules that this guy's lining out he seems to know what he's talking about so you know whoever you are whether you're a developer or not I want to make you know you better at what you're doing. I want to make your store better, and you know whether you work with me ever or not doesn't really matter. I'm here to you know lift all ships in the big commerce development world, and I'm I basically want to share with you guys some of the things, some of the tips and tricks I and my team have um, you know learned over working with big commerce clients since 2010. So we've built you know cumulatively not hundreds, but thousands of custom big commerce stores. And I say custom big commerce stores, like these are individual ones that we built out, all of which had unique functionality, unique look and feels. I'm not talking about slinging a theme, selling it a thousand times, although we did at some point have the, the top selling theme on big commerce. We've been in the big commerce community for a long time, and I just, I wanna help you guys out, and I want everybody to become better together, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, if you're not a developer, have your developer watch these and I want, you know, her or him to be better at their job and to have cleaner code for you as well. So what I'd like to go over in this first video in the series, and I'm going to try and keep each one short. Some will have to be a little bit longer than others. But in this video, I want to go over setting up a, a you know, a Git repo, setting up uh, your Git workflow to basically be I think something that works really well for big commerce. I want to show you how we do it. I want to say up front that you know we have used continuous development, continuous integration for clients previously, and we don't have many clients that are using it right now. And the reason this gets down to you know a best practices type of thing, the clients need to edit their code from time to time. And if you have continuous deployment, then they need to be able to get into Git. They need to know what they're doing and not wreck it. And you know, ultimately we found that not using uh, a continuous workflow is better for the clients. So we don't use that currently, but we do use Git on all of our projects. And I wanna show you how to set that up. So let me share my screen and we'll just dig right into it. So first of all, I'm gonna set up a Git repo. And I'm gonna just show you that guys this from start to finish. So I'm just gonna call this EDL test for video click create the repository I'm going to take the uh, address of it I'm going to open up my command prompt and I'm going to do git clone and clone it then I'm going to browse into it so CBL EDL C D E D L test for video. Okay. So now I have my Git repo set up on 
my computer. There's nothing in it, clearly. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get the stencil CLI key from the store. Now, the store owner has to do this. So if you're logged into the store as the store owner, that's great. Otherwise, you need to probably walk them through how to do this. And to get there, you go to settings and then API accounts, and that'll take you to this screen. Now, when you generate this, there's two different options here. You want to have uh, the key generated as a stencil CLI token. That way it already has all the right permissions for you and you don't have to um, you know, click a bunch of permissions and you don't have to get more permissions than you need. I'm going to just call this for video and there's two choices down here, local development only or publish theme. Now, I always do publish theme because I want the power to just publish right from my CLI, but I have seen some shops do local development only that will force them to do an actual bundle and then manually upload that bundle if everything looks okay. You know, that's maybe a little bit safer, but I think it's a little bit overboard. Um, my, my team really knows what they're doing, so I don't think that that's a huge problem, but that may be a consideration for you. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna choose publish theme, and then that downloads um, a text file here with all of the relevant information. And don't worry, this key will get deleted right after this video. So don't try anything, Mr. or Missy. All right, so I'm gonna just copy this terminal quick start, right like that, and I'm gonna come back to my, uh, my command prompt. I'm gonna paste that in, and this is just doing a stencil init command, and it's automatically pub, uh, putting in the URL of the store as well as the token. And you can see that it's actually putting in the public URL or the temporary URL, which if this theme was, if this store was going to change, like if this was going live at some point, then this stencil CLI uh, in it, the stencil in it is going to be invalid because this URL is no longer going to be valid. So you could use the store dash permanent URL that you see up here in the um, in the address bar as well. But I'm going to just leave it as it is. Oh, I don't have stencil installed. What the heck? Stencil. Stencil. Let's see. Am I on the right version of Node? Oh, I'm not on my normal version of Node that has stencil installed. So pay no attention, you guys. I'm just going to switch over to my uh, NVM use 14.15.5. All right. So this is my version of Node that has stencil installed. So going to go back and paste my stencil in it command again. Uh, it's asking you what API host you're going to use. Just enter, enter, and now it is configured. So now we have our config stencil and our secret stencil. And what we need now to do is to download the theme into this. Now, in the olden days, before about a year ago, um, there was no stencil download command, and so we would have to, at this point, go into the front of the site, download the theme, and then uh, extract it into this folder. But now we have a nice command called stencil download, and it says overwrite local with remote, so you can say yes. And this is going to just download the current live theme. Now, if you're trying to download a theme that is not the current live theme, then this wouldn't work, and you'd need to download... Um, you know, your backup theme or whatever it is you're trying to download from the store. But in this case, I just want to get the current live theme downloaded. And this will just take a minute. It's pretty quick. Button this run live so you guys can see about how long it takes. All right, so now if I do my LS, you can see I have all of my theme files in here. And what I do at this point is I normally, you know, accept that I have files in my local that are not on my Git. So I think good practice is to go ahead and add all those, go ahead and commit them. I call this like my initial seed. Jeez, if I could spell the day. And then I do a git push. normally take but you know 10 20 seconds not a big deal 
if I do get status, then you can see that I'm up to date. Sweet. All right. So now if I open my VS code, then you see that I have all my files here. I have my stencil access token, I have all that stuff. I have this file, I have everything basically. And now I just need to do an NPM install to get my node packages. <clears throat> You're seeing kind of the, the whole soup to nuts in this video, including me drinking some iced tea. So that's fine. That's best practices, you guys. If you're going to code big commerce, you need some iced tea. All right. I'm going to let this run so you guys can see, you know, exactly how long it takes. It doesn't take long, you know. You can set up these. You can set up a new repo, assuming that you have the stencil seal key. I mean, you can set it up in just a couple minutes. Not a big deal. So I'm just going to prop up my local, show you guys a change, and then we're going to run through pushing a new code change into BigCommerce as well as to your Git. So up until now, we've basically completed the workflow to set up the initial repo. So we've set up the repo, we've downloaded the code, we've got the initial code set, you know, your starting point, if you will, into Git as, a, as, a, as an update. And now we're just going to uh, basically prop this up and make a change and run through pushing new code into both Git uh, and BigCommerce. Okay, should be just about done. I guess uh, while that's working, I'll just give you guys a, a quick tour. Um, so BigCommerce's files are composed of layout as the parent most container with pages underneath that and then components as part of that. So your main template file that everything starts from is your base.html and then the individual page will get inserted on that based on like is it a cart page or is it a category page. So this is the parent most. The home would be contained within that and you have basically front matter that loads various data as well as the code of the page. And you can see that the code of the page references components and it references regions. Regions are going to be your page builder regions. Components are going to be your subfiles that come in from here. So your components have just all kinds of good stuff uh, in there. Um, your CSS file is located in assets, SCSS. It's technically an SCSS, not a CSS file. So you have CSS, but then you also have the goodness of SAS combined so that you can nest uh, you can nest your styling, which is really, really nice. All right, so our npm install is done. So now let's do stencil start so we can see this propped up in local. And you can see that it says, OK, it's at localhost 3000. So when we go to localhost 3000, you can see that the site renders now, which is great. So let's just make a change. Let's go ahead and make a change in components, common, header. And let's just go up to the top of the header and say, we're just going to add a line that says test. And there it is, test, just like that. All right. So we've made a change. Obviously, you're going to do something prettier than this. But let's go through the workflow of <clears throat> what to do now. So this is what I do when I start a session, is I start out by doing a git pull just to make sure that I'm working on the most recent version of my git repo. And then if it doesn't do a pull, if it says that there's an error, then you know maybe, uh, maybe I forgot to save something last time, whatever, it doesn't matter. I do git reset dash dash hard space origin, which realigns me to whatever the current working version of git is. And then I do a stencil download, and then I make my code changes. So up until now, we've basically done all of this. And then here's what I do. 
tidbit, change the name of the theme in config.json to include the current date. Now, the reason that we do this is that we want to be able to tell you know, the different versions of our theme apart. And so we found that by going into config.json, you have fields in here, one of which is your name field. And what we do, me and my team, is we come in here and we put the date in here. Just like that. And it doesn't matter like what your formatting is, but just so that, you know, basically every time we make a change, we, we try and update it so we can easily see, oh, this, you know, inactive theme that's five versions back is the one that we put out like a month ago. So if we need to roll back, it's a lot easier to figure out which theme is which. Now, I've seen people change the version number, and I really, really, really recommend not doing that. Um, the version number doesn't affect anything except that it does tell you what version of the the base theme that you're on. And so I and other people will use this to know how far back you are from the current version of Cornerstone, for example, if you're if you're using Cornerstone. So if we change this to say 1.2, then you know other developers are gonna have to think you're on Cornerstone 1.2, which came out like six years ago. You know, and you know, it just it just really muddles what's going on with your theme. And if something doesn't work, you can't track down, like, was it just something that was in this particular version? Because you no longer know which version of the theme that you are on. So my point of view, my suggestion, never change the version period of any theme because this is your reference to where in that theme's, you know, lifetime, timeline, whatever you want to say, where where it sits on there, right? So don't change this but version it by including something into the name. And you can just do this every time that you update it. Um, if you update more than one with the same name, it'll say like this is uh, dash two or something like that. So just make a good practice and change the name whenever you do an update, not a big deal. So I'm gonna click save here, make sure I click save on the header. And now it's time to actually do a push. So we've changed the name of the theme in the config JSON file. So now what I do is I do my update with git at this point and then I will do a stencil push. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start out. Let's do the git status. Here are the files that have been changed. So config.json and templates slash component slash common slash header dot html. So just like we have in here, we are going to do git add commit and then push, and then we're going to do stencil push to make it live. So git add, git commit, that's where we just put a message in here, git add dot adds all of the current changed files, git commit dash m is where we add the message, and then git push, pushes it up to git so that now my local is currently saved to git. So we're going to go stencil, push dash dash delete dash a stencil push dash dash delete dash a so what the dash dash well what the stencil push does is it pushes our our code live into the store and you can only do this if you had the publish flag set on your stencil CLI key now if you didn't have that if you just did the local development only then you would do stencil bundle uh, it's like stencil bundle dash in space, what you want to call it, I think. Uh, I never do it that way. So stencil push pushes this live. Dash dash delete flag will delete the oldest theme on there because there's a limited number of themes that you can have installed on the store. It's maybe like 30 or 40. And so as you accrue more of these, every time you push a new version up, it's going to create a new version. So you kind of have version control built into BigCommerce automatically, which is really awesome. But eventually you're going to hit that cap and it'll say, well, you can't you can't uh, push one up without deleting one. And then there's just kind of a couple manual questions that'll ask you like, which one do you want to delete? However, if you just do dash dash delete, it'll automatically delete the oldest one from the list. And so you'll never you'll never go over the limit because it's it's pruning as you go, if that makes sense. The dash A flag means to go ahead and activate it. Now, if you don't want to, to activate, then don't do the dash A, but I would still do the dash dash delete. There's not really a reason not to. Um, all right, so the theme has finished pushing. 
And so at this point, if we come back here and refresh it on the front end, we should see that test line show up in the right at the top. So just to review the the uh, workflow of actually pushing new code. So when you start a session, you want to come in, do a git pull, and if that doesn't work, do a git reset hard origin to make sure that you're on the most recent uh, git version. Then do a stencil download. So the reason I do this is so that if the customer has made edits to their code, that we're downloading the most recent version of it before we start working to reduce us from overwriting them. Now technically, you could do another git uh, push at this point to make sure that you have a, a save from whatever the live code changes have been that that gets saved before your work session starts. But this is kind of what we do. So git pull, stencil download, that gives us the most, that gives us the live version of the code on our local. And then we make our code changes. We change the name and the config.json file to include the current date. You can change it to be whatever you want, but that's what I recommend doing in order to keep the different versions, um, you know, separate. And then once you're done, <clears throat> do git add dot, git commit m with your message to remember what it was that you included in this, git push, and then stencil push dash dash delete dash a. That's it. Um, appreciate you guys watching this. I'm going to include a link at the bottom of this video for the full playlist for our developer series. I know this was a little bit wonky, but you know what? These can be a little bit wonky. Some of these I'll dig into code. Some of them I won't. But again, it's it's my it's my desire to improve the entire big commerce development community. And so I hope you guys appreciate that. And leave me any comments if you think I've missed something or if you think I, you know, if you, if you think I could do something better. I'm, I'm welcome to suggestions. So thanks a lot. I'll see you guys in the next one.